If you've ever wondered where your subscribers are coming from, or have you ever wondered what that thing is that is the catalyst for all your sales, or maybe inside of your ConvertKit account on your visual automations, you hit that five trigger limit. Well, if any of these things are, have happened to you, the driver philosophy is for you. I'm Jason Resnick of NurtureKit, NurtureKit.co, and today you're going to learn about how to have a clear approach and flow for your subscribers going through your ConvertKit account so that you don't hit any of these roadblocks or wonder answers to what seems like obvious questions as you start to scale and grow your business. See, over the last three plus years of managing ConvertKit accounts for clients, myself, and friends for that matter, I've seen many ways in which accounts, well, they've grown and become so clumsy and cumbersome and, and oftentimes overwhelming to the business owner that it prohibits them from scaling the business. One of the biggest culprits of this is that there is a lack of process or subscriber flow that happens inside of the ConvertKit account. You're getting many different integrations in that are applying tags. You have forms and landing pages that are native. You're running webinars. You're, you're running Facebook ads. You have a whole bunch of things going on and everybody is getting dumped in and just tags are flying. So instead of diving into the computer today, what I'm going to share with you is a whiteboard session. It's a visualization of the subscriber flow that can be put in place based off of the driver philosophy that simply allows flexibility as you scale. But it also puts you in a position so that you or someone else on your team is not the linchpin of knowledge for understanding what is going on inside of your ConvertKit account. So we're going to start out first by all of your subscribers come in by way of a form. Okay. It doesn't matter if it's an integration or a native form, a landing page, whether you're using lead pages or Facebook ad or anything of that nature, you want it to come in through a form. Now these forms could be hidden forms that no one ever sees and it's just used by Zapier or an integration, or they could be full on landing pages that you've designed. But what that allows you to do is that then when you go to your forms area on your ConvertKit account, that page tells you how many subscribers came in. It, if it's a visible form, you can actually see the conversion rate right there, but you start to then get a sense from a business which things are actually effective for your business, right? Driving those front end subscribers into your business. Then what's going to happen is from forms, rules get picked them up. Okay. Now rules inside of ConvertKit are basic. If this happens, then that. And so why a rule? Why not just go straight into a on automation. Well, here's why. Rules have triggers and then actions. You can have an unlimited number of triggers. So if you have a lead magnet that is on your website in an embed form, uh, you're using that lead magnet as a pop-up window. You also have a sticky bar on top of your website. You also have a go to webinar uh, integration with Zapier. Now you already have four that are coming straight into that lead magnet, right? One more, then you've reached that visual automation trigger limit. Where a rule takes place is you can keep adding as many triggers as you need on one side and apply a tag, which I call driver tags, to every subscriber that comes in through that rule. So this rule takes the responsibility of gathering up everyone on these forms and then figuring out what to apply there. These tags, as I said, this is the driver philosophy. And I want you to think about it like an Uber driver or a cabbie, right? They're taking people from one place to the, the other, right? So these driver tags always start with 
a verb, right? And for the most part, you they're going to be prefixed with start, completed, send, right? These are the three most common terms that I use for starting a sequence, like start the welcome sequence, completed the welcome sequence. I use the send tag for sending bonjouros, sending specific actions that might be an integration elsewhere, send to Slack. So these driver tags then get applied to trigger off the visual automations, okay? And the visual automations will oftentimes be one tag that is a start tag. Now, before I dive into that, I also wanna share with you that these driver tags have dual functionalities. Not only do they push and pull subscribers, they also act as a sort of debugging tool, right? So let's just say a visual automation goes haywire and you have a whole bunch of people with the start tag, but they don't have the completed tag. Well, now you know where they're at, where they came from, where they got stuck, right? You can also create segments based off of these tags. So you can have a segment that sort of says start welcome. And then if they don't have the completed welcome, well, then you know that they're currently inside of that welcome sequence. And you can build that for pitch sequences and so on and so forth. So you can start to see how these driver tags can be used in multiple different ways for your reporting as well as growing. Now let's dive into the visual automations. As I said, the triggers that start off visual automations, you're limited to five of them. That's the biggest reason to limiting the triggers that come in to a visual automation. Let's just say you do have that lead magnet. You have a embedded form on your lead magnet, that's one. You have a pop-up, that's two. You have a uh, someone recommended you by using spark loop, that's number three. So you can see quickly your triggers on your visual automation can hit that limit. And then you're only forced to duplicate that visual automation for any other triggers. So if you're using forms, if you're using any sort of multiple different tags for that, well, think about using a driver tag, which is prefixed with start to trigger off any of your visual automations. Then you don't have to worry about duplicating things. And you also don't have to worry about understanding what what is that tag blog doing? Why is that triggering this off, right? So it starts to be clear. Having one or two triggers also allows you to, to quickly see what's working when you start to do some reporting on your subscribers and your funnels. As I said, the visual automations are gonna hit, are gonna always start with the start driver tag and they're gonna end with the completed driver tag, right? But inside of that, I know you're thinking about it, what are we doing with the emails? Now, all of your emails should be sent via a visual automation. And the reason why is because every single automation in your business should have a goal attached to it, right? That goal, once it happens, can pull that person out if they are passed in through a visual automation. You can clearly see that the visual automation encapsulates all of the logic around that goal, right? The sequences in there, the, the, the logics, the custom fields, the tagging, everything sits in that visual automation. And so once that event happens, if they bought your course, if they've renewed their membership, they get pulled out of that sequence and they don't get those other emails that makes it somewhat redundant for them. The driver philosophy, you now have a cohesive flow anyone, yourself, your teammates can come in, even a consultant can come in and say, okay, I understand what's going on here. If you know that the ingress, the, the every single subscriber coming in is tied to a form that a rule picks up and then a visual automation handles all the logic and the emailing, then you have that nice cohesive experience for your subscribers. See, one of the biggest obstacles that I see when I work with ConvertKit accounts that are looking to grow is that there is no cohesive flow for the subscribers. So I appreciate that ConvertKit has evolved tremendously over the years. However, 
you may have some of those legacy forms or landing pages that directly pass people into sequences. I get it. But ask yourself this, do you wonder where your customers are coming from? Not your subscribers, but your customers are coming from. Or ask yourself, can I easily figure out which one of my marketing efforts is working the best? If you can, awesome. The driver philosophy may not be for you, or maybe you'll just take a bits and pieces of it. But if the answer is no on either of those, then I encourage you to put in place the driver philosophy so that you can have a consistent subscriber flow that's flexible and grows with you, that you're not left wondering, hey, I'm stuck here now. I don't know where things are. Or even if you uh, aren't in your ConvertKit account every single day or every week, that you can then bounce into it and say, okay, I understand what's going on here. Okay. So you know, the driver philosophy is based around understanding what is going on in your business. If this was helpful or bits and pieces of this was helpful, I encourage you to, to hit that subscribe button and that bell icon so that you get notified the next time a video drops. And until next time, treat your lists like humans and amazing transformations will happen.